Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you have not been here before, my name is Rita and it has been a long time. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and with all the COVID and the lockdowns and all this crazy stuff. Anyway, hope everybody is blessed and doing well. So today I wanted to um, respond to um, a video by Mr. Reagan. I don't know if some of you probably know who he is, maybe, maybe you don't. But anyway, I want to respond to uh, one of his videos. So he talked in one of his videos about these uh, seemingly one-off crimes that are being committed by young black teens. Um, and one of the stories he reported was about a 14-year-old and a 17-year-old who lit um, uh, elderly or a disabled, yes, elderly, a white man on fire while he burned him alive and so that was one of the stories and he brought up the story um, and was just talking about how these things are being overlooked by the media and he was sort of you know um, hypothesizing about why these stories may be being overlooked by the media and what he concluded or I shouldn't say concluded I don't want to say that but one of the uh, ideas he had about this was that perhaps the media might be afraid of the um, backlash and repercussions they might start to see from white people or white men in particular who are going to start basically rising up against this stuff or we're going to start seeing retaliatory actions, right? But I would like to offer a different uh, perspective on this. So as someone who has grown up in um, poor black neighborhoods, I will tell you um, that is, I don't think that that's why the media is not covering it. And here's why. These incidents, suppo these supposed one-off incidents are not one-off. They're not one-off at all. And as a matter of fact, incidents like this are commonplace in black culture, sad to say, it is. And when I say black culture, Obviously, I'm not talking about every single black person. Obviously, I'm, I don't commit crimes. You know, I'm not involved in those types of behaviors but um, or activities. But the black culture promotes, unfortunately, uh, lots of uh, wickedness, to be honest. Crime is rampant. Over-sexualization is rampant. All these other things. So I read this story uh, that happened in Illinois, I believe, about a month ago about a girl who, uh, uh, this is a, a middle school girl, I believe, uh, grade school, who, a white girl, who uh, was a the victim of a random attack by a classmate, okay? This was somebody else in the school, another girl who out of nowhere blindsided her, walked up behind her, yanked her hair, snatched her down to the ground, and broke out some of her front teeth. I'm just bringing this up to say that this is par for the course in the in black culture unfortunately you know people if you grow up and when i say black culture i'm talking about people who live in the ghetto obviously people who live in the hood um it, it's the hood culture they live by a different set of ethics they live by a different culture. they don't live by the same cultural norms as as the, the larger society so when we see things like this or lighting people on fire or just out of nowhere sucker punching or attacking people these on the streets these are not isolated and that is why i believe the media is not talking about it because the media does not want people who don't live in these communities to start to realize that these aren't isolated events that it really is part of the culture it is normative in black communities for these types of things to happen armed robberies like you've seen first 48 and a lot of people who don't live in these communities might be thinking it's an embellishment like when they watch shows like first 48 like oh this is this is all made up or whatever some people might think that no this stuff happens so often in black communities but now here's the key now 
these people who these these predators, I call them, because obviously not every single person in black community is like this, like not every individual. But make no mistake, the culture is inculcated with this type of behavior and these thought processes. Right. So and if you try if you're somebody who breaks out of that, who doesn't run along with that hood thought process and you live there, you are also uh, typically the victim of such uh, heinous attacks as well. Um, you don't get by. I've had plenty of family members who have been attacked, blindsided, sucker punched out of nowhere because they don't fit into the thug, the hood mode or whatever. They live by the normal code of ethics, but that's not the case there. So anyway, um, but these people are now these these predators now feel emboldened to carry their uh, predatory behavior outside of the hood, outside the ghettos because of you know, the media and promoting this systemic crap, race crap and all this other stuff. These people are now emboldened. See, one thing you have to realize and, and to the point, let me back it up a bit. When Mr. Reagan talked about that, perhaps the media is not talking about this because they fear that, that the backlash from black, I mean, from white males. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let everybody in on a little something. If you don't, if you're, if you're not part of the black culture or whatever, you may not know this, but there is a stigma. And the stigma is that whites are soft, docile and passive and easy to victimize, honestly. And they fully take advantage of what is playing out in the media. They fully take advantage of this idea that, of especially white leftists who believe that, oh, poor black people, there are no resources. Oh, don't profile them. It's just a black guy, you know, jogging through a neighborhood and, you know, oh, this, that don't, don't be racist. Everybody's being a, we don't, we want, we want people from the projects live moving into our, our suburbs because we want to give them an opportunity, all that stuff right there. They are so thrilled because there's this, there was always this invisible boundary that um, I think people in the hood wouldn't cross, okay? Going into white neighborhoods or the suburbs or whatever you want to call it, they whatever they call them, uh, because they felt like money can buy you protection. And they feel like, they always felt like, well, you better not go into the white neighborhoods because if you go into those white neighborhoods, the police won't have any mercy on you. That was always kind of the thought process or you're going to go to jail for a long time if you go in these rich white neighborhoods, even if they're not rich. But, you know, people think white automatically means you got money. So even if you if you, you better not go over there, because you're going to get in trouble if you you can pick on people in the hood and threaten and terrorize them all day long. But if you start terrorizing white people, you're going to jail. Well, guess what? You see what they've done to the police in the past year. So. Now, those invisible, those boundaries where people kind of mentally thought were there are removed. So these people who terrorize, all bets are off. Boundaries have been removed. That's why you're starting to see more crimes escalate in the suburbs. Now, if you start seeing, if the media starts reporting on all of the things that happen quite off, like day to day, normal, everyday life in the hood, in the ghettos, uh, people are, number one, going to freak out. Number two, all of a sudden, their narratives are going to start to crumble, maybe. Uh, I don't know. People are so indoctrinated with what they've been saying. Who knows? But I think that's another reason. And a final, final point I wanted to make about this is that, which is really the, the, the sad part about this, is that these political activists and these uh, government officials who are promoting all of this anti-police and uh, systematic racism or systemic racism, all this stuff, the people who are promoting these things, they know good and well that the culture in black communities is a violent culture. They fully understand what it is. So not only are they stirring the pot, what they're doing is they're using these people who are already mentally disturbed, meaning these predators who who prey on or who, who look to victimize people, whether inside the hood or outside the hood, they are using these people as terrorists to do their bidding for them. 
And this is the saddest part of it. This is why they won't clean up the communities. This is why, you know, activists, BLM and others can go into these communities and preach about police brutality and all this other stuff. And they refuse to even say they even to say black on black crime. They won't even acknowledge that there is a problem. Why? Because they're using these young black men who really a lot of them, you know, uh, committing these things are ill and they need help. Um, but but they won't approach that because they're they're exploiting people's uh, the community's pains over all of the crime and the everything else that's happening, the sexual abuse and everything else that happens in these communities. Um, they're exploiting these already uh, vulnerable, volatile situations for their gain. So when they start talking about racism, all white people are bad, racism, when they start saying all this stuff, well, what's going to happen? They're going to uh, enrage people who have rage problems and mental problems. Um, who already look for people to take advantage of and victimize. And then on top of that, when you start saying we're against the police and you've removed the protections of the police, well, now um, you can start to say, yeah, we're going to remove the police and we're going to put Section 8 in the suburbs. They're doing this on purpose. They know that what this breeds when they start taking people in or we're going to move people from the projects to the to to white areas or whatever. They know what they're doing. They're doing this on purpose. They're using them as terrorists because, and when I say they, I'm talking about these activists and these uh, these these politicians who are on the who basically activists in government. They all know this. They know it's going to create havoc. They know that these people, these hood people, live by a different set of ethics, and they're doing this on purpose. They are trying to terrorize who they think are dissidents. And their enemies, and their enemies are the middle class. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat, don't be fooled. They will use young black men to do it. They will unleash them into the neighborhoods and they don't care. They, they don't know they're being used by, by Democrats. They don't know they're being used by politicians to enact their terrorism, but this is nothing new. This is nothing new. Uh, Democrats have always had a terrorist wing, and now they're in they're ex enlisting uh, young black men and Black Lives Matter and all these Antifa and all these other groups to inflict terror on the middle class. Again, doesn't matter matter which side of the aisle you fall on. This is what is going down. Um, they, this is why the media will not report it.